What's up YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul. And of course today we're going to continue on talking about the mastering process, or rather the mastering chain done in Logic Pro, or any DAW for that matter. So far I've given you tutorials on a bus compressor, which is our first plugin in our chain, a linear phase EQ as it fills up my screen, and a multi-presser. The next uh, plugin in our chain is going to be a stereo imager, something that will take our sound and kind of spread it out across the left and right channel fields. But a tip anytime that we uh, do come into play with stereo imaging, we are going to run into some phase issues. Now, for those of you who don't know about phase issues, anytime we sum down our stereo track to a mono track, there may be some certain frequencies that kind of vanish from our mix which means some of our material from our song will be gone if we have phase issues in our track. Now, of course, we don't want any material or frequencies kind of just vanishing from our song. We always want to stay in phase with whatever we do because we made sure we were in phase in our mix. And of course, we're going to continue staying in phase in our mastering. But there are some problems when you add some stereo imaging because it does cause you to be out of phase. But I'm going to show you ways to avoid that as well so we stay nice and in phase. So first thing I'm going to do is bring in a stereo imager plugin. Now Logic does have a couple of them, which is one is under hmm, imaging, which you got direction mixer and stereo spread. But the one I like to use is modulation spreader. For some odd reason, I like the way this one sounds and works. I may be weird, but I like this one better than any of the other ones. And like I said, anytime we do add in a spreader plugin or stereo imaging plugin, we do run into phase issues. So we always have to bring in our trusty imaging plugin, the, oops, sorry, metering plugin, the correlation meter. It's, it's a very simple plugin. That means if you're in the blue, you're good to go. If you're in the red, you're not good to go and you gotta fix something. And this line will tell you where you are. If you're all the way up here, that means your left and right channels are 100% phase and they're good to go. If it's kind of hovering around this middle right here, that means this is the highest uh, band or point at which it can go so that you don't have phase issues. Once it passes this midpoint right here and goes into this red zone, that means you got phase issues and you gotta start fixing something. Now it's okay to go in a little bit, but if you're going all the way to here, you got some bad stuff happening, you gotta fix that. You always wanna make sure you're on the right because right is always right. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, first of all, and turn on our spreader plugin. It's just so we hear the idea of what it sounds like. So I'm gonna to go to a extreme one. So that's on, off. On, listen to the claps, off. Listen to the claps and on. So as you can see, it just takes that sound, just kind of widens it up like crazy. But at the same time, it's making our whole thing out of whack and out of phase, which means we're losing some frequencies which we don't want. We want to keep all our information intact, whether it's played on a mono system or a stereo system. So the first thing I like to do is, well, actually bring up this preset. I like this preset. And I never adjust the mix. I always adjust the intensity. So the intensity, intensity will act as our wet and dry balance. So of course, this is completely wet. This is completely dry. So for now, I'm going to leave it all the way up there. Our channel delay right here kind of creates that widening sound. So I'm going to leave it around, let's say 175. And our speed right here, the lower this knob is, the more lower frequencies you'll be kind of widening. The higher this is, of course, you probably guessed it, the higher you will be affecting the higher frequencies. So I'm going to show you that right now, just so you could hear the difference. So listen to the kicks on this one you're kind of almost getting a doubling effect on the kicks. And as I bring this up, you're going to hear the kick come back to the center and the higher frequencies kind of get pushed wider. I like to go around one to three here. Let's go around there. So 
So right now we are not good. We are having some phase problems. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is lower my intensity. So here's our effect on. Listen to the claps, off. Now the claps came to the center. I turn this on. The claps get pushed out beyond our left and right channels. Off. And on. So that sounds pretty good right there. Again, subtlety is key whenever mastering or even mixing for that matter, but mastering especially. Some people like to just take this plug in, put the intensity all the way up, everything just crazy and just make it super wide. But really they don't realize that they are having phase issues and you can actually hear it because it's so dramatic. But uh, again, subtlety, even this is a little bit pushing it, but uh, we can get away with it. The next thing I like to do is kind of cycle through different parts of my song to make sure I'm always in phase. So going a little bit, I'm not gonna be too, stressed about. All right, so it looks like we're okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and A-B this. So this is it on, listen to the claps. Now listen to the claps come to center when I turn it off. So now let's go push it out. All right, so that's how you add in some uh, spreader or audio stereo image, boosting your stereo image in Logic Pro done correctly and still stay in phase because a lot of people say, hey, it's gonna throw your mix out of phase, but we got this nifty little plugin that we can check ourselves. So if you have any questions on this, you can ask me in the comment section below. And as usual, guys, for more good videos, remember to subscribe as they're always coming, just like the next video that's going to come, which is our final plug in our mastering chain. Like I said, this is one way to build a mastering chain, sort of a good kind of get yourself into mastering kind of chain <laughs> to go. Anyways, guys, I'm just kind of rambling on right now. Remember to subscribe. Any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial and video. Talk to you guys soon. Later.